uh, check the voice. Hello, uh, can hear you. Good morning, Professor. Okay, morning. We still have one minute. I just checked uh, the sound. The sound is good, Joe. Thank you. I know you can hear me. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's time. So uh, we start our course. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jun Chen uh, from uh, Sing. Hello from Shanghai, and uh, uh, it's a very unique experience to give uh, <clears throat> this lecture online. Uh, I hope you can enjoy this. And uh, the the title of this course is the Dynamics of Structures. And we have uh, two uh, parts today. Uh, first, I'd like to give you a very brief uh, course outline of this uh, course. And then we will go through uh, chapter one uh, of this uh, uh, our text. So first, let's uh, say something about this course. So this is the purpose of this course. I will not repeat this. It's, uh, I give you a structure later after this course, and I give you the load, and you can carry it, uh, the, uh, like in, in external. If I give you external loading, you can calculate the responses of this structure due to this uh, load. So this is the purpose of this course. And the textbook of this part, uh, this course is this one. Uh, this uh, the, the the classical uh, dynamic of structures textbook uh, written by Professor Kraft here, and this is uh, our, our uh, course will be organized according to the contents of this this book. Uh, I think you can find uh, electronic copy of this book online. So if you don't have a hard copy. And we can also have other uh, references uh, if you uh, you have uh, time. Uh, you, you can use other uh, books to enhance your understanding. Uh, here is another very famous textbook. This is the Dynamics of Structures, uh, uh, written by Professor Chopra. Uh, this is a uh, uh, also, this these two are very very famous in uh, in this uh, field, and there's a uh, one which is uh, structural dynamics and introduction to computer methods. Uh, this one uh, focuses on dynamics of mechanical systems. Uh, if if the above two are, are focusing on normal structures like buildings, high-rise buildings, bridges. And this textbook, this one focuses on uh, like uh, wind turbine, mechanical system, automobile, something like that. So if your research topic uh, related to like wind turbine, uh, I suggest you to uh, to use this book to, uh, to to start some special topic related to rigid uh, body system. And here's a textbook uh, in Chinese. I just uh, see some some students saying uh, festival uh, wish to me uh, using Chinese. So if you can Chinese books, this one is also famous. When I was a student, this is a textbook. Uh, this is a very famous. Uh, this is a, a a book from uh, written by a very famous uh, professor in Tongji University. So basically, we we are using this one. Okay, you, you are, we are using this one. And if you uh, use the 
the keywords structural dynamics or uh, dynamic of structures to search the library, the internet, you will find many, many books uh, on this uh, topic. Here are some. Here are some of my collections. Uh, sorry, they're in Chinese. The title is in Chinese. But you can see there are many, many uh, textbooks, some uh, in, uh, in English. This, this one is uh, by Chopra. And this is this dimension, this, the, the third one. And also you can see some other uh, like engineer vibration, structural dynamics, uh, different uh, textbooks. Uh, they all have their own, uh, let's say, features. Uh, so, but normally they, 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 they share the same uh, uh, basic principles, ideas. Um, they, they tell the story from different angles so if you uh, have this you can find this uh, textbook you can cross check on, on the same topic <clears throat> so here are uh, other some uh, uh, books here and if you uh, like to do more uh, exercises problem to solve problems uh, you can use this one okay this one uh, uh, structural dynamics uh, written by Pace. Uh, this one is very famous. Uh, I mean, by uh, his uh, problem, it, it has many, many uh, problems, exercises. You can see the edition of this book. This is a 50 edition. It is very popular. And this year is 2003, almost 18 years ago. So I don't know what is it, uh, this. Uh, I didn't check that. But uh, it's also uh, it's a very very popular uh, book, so you can use this one. And in this course, we are focusing on so-called deterministic uh, analysis of a structure due to dynamic loads. Um, if you are handling uh, some uh, random excitation, like wind loading, sea wind, uh, traffic. And also, of course, uh, sometimes earthquakes. Uh, I mean, later we will explain the, the difference between the random excitation and the deterministic uh, excitation. But if you're uh, getting random excitation, uh, this book is, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the classical one uh, by Professor Song, T. Song. <clears throat> uh, the random vibration mechanical and structural system. So uh, this is the beyond our, our cost, because this is a uh, cost. So the agenda of this course is like this. Uh, today is uh, week one. We call the week uh, academic week or, or teaching week. So from week one to week seven, uh, we will study uh, the single degree of freedom system which uh, covers chapter one to eight of the textbook by uh, Kraft. Uh, then uh, from week eight to week 14, uh, we will study the contents of multi-degree of freedom system, uh, which is from uh, chapter nine to chapter 19. And then uh, we will have two weeks, week 15 and week uh, 16, we will discuss some special topics. Uh, <clears throat> the focus is like how to use the knowledge, the ideas, the method we used, what we started in this topic, uh, in this uh, course to, to solve real problems, uh, real uh, civil engineering problems. So we will have some uh, like uh, how, how to uh, calculate responses of a bridge due to pedestrian loading, uh, how to calculate the uh, vibrations of a bridge due to a running train, uh, something like that. <clears throat> so we will discuss that. Uh, how, how we use uh, the, the knowledge here to solve real problems. And in week 17, there is a review of the whole course because we have a final examination in week 18. So before the final examination, we will have a review. 
uh, to go through all the uh, key points of the courses. But because uh, with this course online, uh, maybe we will change the, the pattern or uh, the form of the final examination. Uh, it depends. It depends on uh, how, how we uh, uh, later I will, uh, I will uh, ask the authority, the office, the general office, the teaching office to, to confirm what is uh, the, the form of the final examination. It's, uh, <clears throat> I, will, I will give you this information later. So this is uh, the, the agenda of this course. And for each week, starting today, uh, we will have uh, three lecture hours per week, uh, which is a, <clears throat> uh, this is a, uh, every week. And the recommended uh, uh, additional personal start after the course is a six to nine hours per week, which is one uh, over two or one, one over three, which means you take one hour course, you need to spend three hours. <clears throat> later starting uh, the, the accountants or the accountants. This is not by me. You remember the, the Professor Chopra? I mean the second textbook. Uh, we, we, we met Professor uh, Chopra, I think maybe uh, 12 or 15 years ago in Hongji uh, when he visited us. And uh, all the teachers here in Chongji who are, who are teaching structural dynamics, we have a meeting with uh, Professor Trump, and uh, he asked us these questions. Uh, what is the ratio of the teaching hour and personal study hour for the students? Uh, and then, then he said that, he suggested uh, it should be one over three, <laughs> one over three. So this is uh, the commanded additional personal studies. And how you get your final grades? Uh, we have a homework. Today we will have homework, and maybe we'll have a quiz. I will not tell you when, and <clears throat> we will have a final examination. And the, the first uh, uh, two uh, will have a well, will covers uh, forty percent of the final mark, and the final examination sixty percent. And as I just mentioned, uh, what is uh, the form? of the final examination we have not decided yet. I will let you soon as it is available. And the previous knowledge uh, it should be recorded. Okay, let me uh, start the recording. I forget. Uh, maybe we we'll start from chapter one. Okay, this is just the uh, the, the outline of this. Okay. <clears throat> and the previous knowledge for starting the uh, dynamics versus uh, structural mechanics, of course, right? You need to know how we analysis uh, structures. And you need uh, basic knowledge about advanced mathematics, like differential equations, how to solve uh, differential equations, uh, some basic knowledge, or you can just go, go back to review your textbook. And mechanics and materials, and also uh, some programming skill for you to. Uh, we have a big project. Uh, then uh, you need to program uh, using the computer to solve that project. Uh, here we 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 mentioned a MATLAB, but you can use any computer uh, program you are familiar with, like Python, Fortran. Uh, Maple, you can use any anyone you like, anyone you're familiar with. It's just an example showing here as meta. Okay? So the final slide of this part, uh, you need to submit your homework through the canvas.tongi.edu.cn. I will give you, I will release the homework today after this course, and then you need to submit your homework uh, through this system uh, before the deadline. Okay, any questions? Uh, hello, Lord. Uh, I'd like mm -hmm. to ask uh, if we're going to have some introduction about 
how to maybe simulate some let's say some objects like in dynamic loads using maybe MATLAB or other softwares is it like is it in this class or not if we're going to have simulation using softwares uh, as I just mentioned here we, we use very very limited uh, let's say MATLAB here it's just for your uh, big project we have a project here like I give you the uh, the model of uh, high-rise building uh, give you the wind loads and you need to calculate the response of this uh, building subjected to that wind load. Okay, only there you need to use uh, the MATLAB. So it's very limited. If you are not familiar, sorry, we are focusing here on the um, on the basic principles of the structural dynamics. So we're not focused on the simulation of the structure or some computer skills. No, we don't focus on that. It's just uh, the basic principles. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Okay. If you have a further question, you can ask me during the break. Or uh, even after the the, the the course, you can ask me uh, through the WeChat group. So this part we will finish. This part, close this one. I will open another slide. Sorry. Okay, so let's start with this one, first chapter. <clears throat> uh, introduction of uh, structural dynamics. Okay, before you lose losing any of your uh, folks' your attention, I will tell you that the keyword of today's lecture, lecture one, is EOM. Three letters, EOM, stands for Equation of Motion. So uh, the, today's focus is how to give up or drive the equation of motion for a system you're going to analysis. Okay, this is uh, uh, the, the focus of today's uh, lecture. And before that, you can see here the formulation of equation of motion. And before that, we need to start a several uh, subtopics uh, showing here. Okay. So first, uh, we need the uh, video. Should. Okay, the purpose of this uh, uh, of the the dynamics. You can see here we we do have the uh, situation or. Uh, scenarios or cases that we need to analyze the structure uh, subject to some dynamic loading like earthquake. You can see this is a Tongshan earthquake in China, which is a, a very huge earthquake causing huge uh, damage and casualties. And this is a collapse of uh, buildings due to earthquake. And this is wind this is a bridge and you can see the vertical vibration due to horizontal wind so the wind is blowing like this way and the bridge vibrates this way <clears throat> and this is wind turbine it is, it's a this, this is a very interesting uh, case you see the the wind turbine uh, i think it enjoys wind right it's a uh, walks under high winds, but when the winds is too high, it causes damage to the wind turbine. So there's a balance between uh, the working wind speed and the safety working speed, a uh, safety wind speed. So this is a uh, uh, we need problems when we consider. And <clears throat> besides the the dynamic loadings you may familiar, earthquakes, winds, uh, there's uh, some uh, 
uh, dynamic loading you may not be very familiar like here showing here is a very famous example this is a footage in UK uh, you can see when the people walking on this bridge the bridge vibrates due to uh, the people's working load and vibrates horizontally and I, I can tell you that uh, this, this footbridge was closed on its opening day. So this is uh, the, the footbridge, uh, the, the record of the first, uh, first opening day. And after that day, it was open for three years. Because the people, they don't know why this bridge vibrates due to people walking. So they spent uh, three years starting the reason to find the measures to reduce this vibration. So this is human walking. <clears throat> As I mentioned that in chapter uh, 15 or 16, we will discuss this case. And it seems very complicated, but you can use all the knowledge we learn in this class to solve, to solve this problem. So this is we, uh, when you're talking about smart city, smart building, uh, or intelligent building, you can see if uh, there's intelligent building which can uh, respond to the uh, external loading so can uh, design an <coughs> intelligent building. So this is some examples of you why when you start uh, the, the, the dynamics of structures. <coughs> and what is the meaning of dynamic we need to first discuss? So what is uh, the dynamic analysis or sometimes vibration analysis? So the dynamic, dynamic <coughs> here means uh, time varying or time dependent, which means the state of the structure is time varying or time dependent. And the vibration means that the structure oscillates, you know, uh, from about to a initial equilibrium position. So there's a, uh, always there's an initial, uh, initial equilibrium position. There's a position that the structure vibrates against or above this position. So this will mean vibration. So if this one goes away, like a, a, a car or train, that means movement. Okay, that's movement. That's not vibration. Okay, that's not vibration. <clears throat> because it uh, goes away from its original. It's not vibrates, not oscillates uh, back and through uh, about its equilibrium position. So this is a slightly difference between these two words. <clears throat> and then uh, there's uh, some other uh, uh, definitions of the, uh, the, the, the dynamic, structural dynamics. So what's uh, the, the the task was the purpose of structural dynamics. You can see here, the structural dynamics is a type of structural analysis that finds out the behavior of structures subjected to dynamic loading. Uh, dynamic here means action ha having high acceleration, okay, high acceleration. And here is like uh, the master's uh, analysis, the stress and deflections. So this is internal force, right, stress. And this is the deflections developed in any given type of structures when it's subjected to a arbitrary dynamic loading. <clears throat> and here is also a, a definition of the dynamic analysis, which means the determination uh, of the displacement and internal force of a structure due to time-dependent external loads or initial conditions. So sometimes there is no load, but the change of initial conditions will cause uh, the vibration of a system or structure. <clears throat> so this is the meaning, and this is actually our purpose. Okay, later uh, the the whole cost we can see that the whole cost is going uh, is focused on the, the stress or deflection, uh, mostly the deflection. So there is a dynamic low their system. What is the deflection? Uh, a displacement of the structure. So how we calculate, how we get that. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> there are four types of uh, structural dynamics analysis problems. 
<clears throat> because we discuss about dynamic analysis, so uh, we, we, we need to know uh, the type, neural types of structural dynamic analysis problems. So the first type we call structural dynamic problem. Okay, so, uh, we, sometimes we call direct uh, structural analysis problem. Uh, let me <clears throat> so any problem? Someone send me a message. Is that is the class being recorded? Uh, okay. Uh, change of the initial conditions because we will discuss this uh, chapter two. But now, if you uh, interest, uh, can hear you. Can you see this? This is a flower, but. This is a high-rise building. You can see. I mean, like, you can see this is a high-rise building. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you see that? Yes, sir. I can see it. So, if you are uh, sorry, I close my mic. Can you see that? Yes, sir. I can see it. If you if you have uh, some uh, device, you know, like you push this this structure away from its original position. You introduce an initial displacement, then you suddenly release it. There is no external loading here, but the structure vibrates. This is what we see. I uh, will see uh, the vibration due to initial conditions. So this is one case, which means you introduce initial displacements. Or sometimes you can introduce initial Velocity, see if we can, you know, <clears throat> impact, impact the structures, impact it, then it start to vibrate. Once vibrate, there's no external loading, there's no wind or earthquakes, no other loading, but it is vibrate due to the so-called initial conditions. Uh, there's uh, uh, other things that we will discuss this later. Uh, due to initial condition, basically it's initial displacement or initial velocities. Okay, so uh, let me see. There's another question. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I will forget. We call this again. Uh, I need to recall this. So I'm not still not familiar with this one. Let me check where I can recall this. Sorry, somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, starting recall. Okay, thank you for reminding me. <clears throat> so, uh, so you have further uh, question? You can just uh, send me the uh, message. So there are the four uh, types, and let me try to write this to explain this uh, for situations. So say we have an input here, which means the external loading, and we have a structure, which is system, and we have output, which means responses, displacement, deflection of the structure. So we have these three components. So we have these uh, three components here. This is input, system, output. <clears throat> In this course, we are learning uh, I give you the input, give you the structure, you, meet, you need to calculate the output. So like this is this is one building, this is a load, so I give you this two, you calculate this one. So this we call direct problems. And I think some of you maybe have this uh, research topic which calls structural uh, system identification, structure identification, uh, or structural health monitoring, Something like this. In that case, uh, you know, uh, for, for example, you know the output of the structure, you know the structure itself, and you need to determine the input. Uh, let's say you have a structure here, you have a structure uh, already built here, and you have some devices to re record, let's say, the responses, acceleration or displacement on each floor, each story. So you know the system, 
you know the output. And now, if there's a wind load here, it's was due to the wind load, but you don't know the wind speed, you don't know the wind pressure. Uh, how we determine this, we can use this tool to identify the inputs. So this is what we call excitation identification problem, which is indirect one. So this is the uh, indirect problem. And sometimes you know, you know the inputs. In many cases, you know the inputs, you know the outputs. And you need to determine the parameters of the system. <clears throat> Taking this example again, if you have devices <clears throat> To measure the wind load, you know the wind load, you know the wind pressure, you know the wind speed, and you have devices to measure the responses. You know the acceleration, you know the displacement, and what is the stiffness of this structure, or is the mass of the structure? You need to determine this one, because when you design this building, you just assume uh, the stiffness and the mass of the structure. When it was built, what is the real Stiffness, what is the real uh, mass? Uh, what is the real, let's see, uh, model shapes of this structure? You need to check, you need, you know, this structural identification problem. You need to identify, identify it, okay, identify it. So this is another problem. And uh, there's a very special case, which we call hybrid identification problem. Um, in some cases, you just know the output. You only know the output. And you need to use the output to determine the system, the structure's parameters. And at the same time, you need to identify the input. So this is a very big uh, problem. It's impossible, but it can be done when you introduce uh, some uh, assumptions. Okay? Of course, mathematically, this is not... not uh, a problem. This is impossible. You cannot use only this one to determine both of these two. So you need assumptions. You need more uh, uh, assumptions to to make it uh, can be solved. So in this course, we only focus on this one. But uh, it is the base uh, for the other three problems. So if you research topic related to this one, uh, you need learn first. Then you can move on. We can uh, extend to these uh, topics, the other three topics. So this is a four uh, types of structural dynamic analysis. <clears throat> so uh, we need to discuss about how we describe the motion, as, it, uh, as we just discussed, that the purpose of this, uh, this uh, course is calculate displacement, deflection of the structure, but how we, uh, we need to use some uh, measures or coordinates to determine this. So how we describe motion. So we use the time dependent coordinates like this one, which is, uh, this T is time. So this is, a uh, see we have uh, N locations. We need to know its deflections. Then we need uh, N coordinates to uh, to, to, to do this. So we have this. And the number of this n, we call this degree of freedom. Okay, degree of freedom. <clears throat> the degree of freedom is uh, uh, a quantity that to specify the displacement co co <clears throat> components and uh, rotation components of a system of mass particles or extended rigid bodies from a known uh, or known place, known position. As I mentioned, we have equilibrium position. So this is uh, against this position with respect to the uh, position. So this is a, a description of motion. We will go back to this later because this is uh, related to a very important uh, concept today, which is we call degree of freedom of system, QF. So later we will go back to this uh, idea again. So now I give you this uh, equation. And uh, another topic is the type of loadings. Uh, we need to know, know the, the type of the loading. Uh, then we can uh, solve the, the problem. We need to know the, the dynamic properties of the loading. Uh, because 
uh, later we will, we will learn that different uh, loading, you have different type of loading, means you need different methods or different skills to solve this problem. Okay? For this, this type of loading, you use this, this master, you, this type you use this master, like this. So we need to know the um, types of loadings. Basically, there are two. One we call deterministic loading, and the other we call random loading. Okay, random loading. <clears throat> deterministic loading means that uh, we have, we know exactly the value of this loading at any time instant, like time instant t, uh, ti or tj, we know the exactly value, uh, exactly uh, amplitude of this load. So this we call deterministic loading. And if we only know its st statistical features, like we know the mean value or the uh, standard variation <coughs> of this load, we call it random loading. We don't know. We don't know the exactly value. We just know its mean. Mean, you know, mean, M-E-A-N, the mean value, or it's a standard deviation uh, of the low, because run low. At any time, we always mean that. <coughs> it's called uh, the <coughs> random low. And uh, in this course, we focus on, okay, uh, as the, the book mentioned by Professor T.T. Uh, it's random vibration, it's focused on this one. Okay, how is it? But again, uh, you when you, start, you need knowledge from here. Okay, the, this is the, the foundation of the base. Uh, but in this course, we always focus on this <coughs> deterministic loading. And for the deterministic loading, it's you can see it can be so, uh, divided into another two types. One is called periodic loading, so periodic loading, and the other one is called non-periodic loading, non-periodic loading. And for the periodic loading, there are the other two. One is harmonic, one is uh, non-harmonic. Okay, non-harmonic. Let me give you an example. I will try to, you know, draw this as, oh, sorry. Just imagine this is, uh, <clears throat> let's see, this is a sine curve. Uh, this is a sine curve. If there is loading of a time history like this, we call it harmonic. It's like sine or cosine. Just uh, this sine function or cosine function to describe this loading, we call it harmonic one. Okay, harmonic. So how about this one? If we have a loading like this, I'm sorry. Oh, this is uh, too difficult to to draw this by moss. Okay, I'll try my best. Okay, so which means it has only the positive one for a sine sine wave. Is this a harmonic one? No. Anyone? No. Sir. No, this is not a harmonic one, but this is a periodic one. Okay, this is a, is is periodic. This is T. If we see T, and T, <clears throat> this is a periodic loading, but not a harmonic one. Harmonic one only means it's a sine or cosine wave, a, a cosine function. It's only sine or cosine function, which is very very important. Okay, very important. Later you will know. Uh, the harmonic uh, loading is very important, and based on that, we can uh, deal with the non-harmonic. Can anyone give me an example of harmonic excitation in the real, in a real uh, structure, in a real engineering structure? Anyone? The, the routine, rotating of uh, machinery in a building. Rotating of mass. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, very good. <clears throat> if the rotating machine with the eccentric mass, okay, the mass is eccentric, not not centered. Yes. So when it rotates, yes. it will generate a uh, harmonic loading. So harmonic loading. So anyone give me an example of uh, 
non high but PRR coding. Let's say it's half sign. So this is a positive sign. So positive sign. Or it's a triangle. You can use a triangle here, triangle here, triangle here, a triangle. Here. So this is a, a particle, but non harmonic one. Uh, like is it that? Uh, one by one. Okay. Uh, in case of uh, when we are comparing our uh, grade. <laughs> In case of compaction, uh, sir, in, in case of compaction, when we are using uh, some kind of compactor, we only have a uh, non-periodic loading. In one direction, that is by blows. And we okay. say that that is non-periodic loading. So, uh, uh, you're asking a question. Actually, I, 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 I ask a question. <laughs> And I'm expecting for an answer in uh, give me an example of non harmonic but periodic loading. I, I answer my question first. Uh, so, like if you would, you would jumping, okay? So jumping, 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 or walking on the floor on a bridge. That is a, a periodic loading, okay? That's a periodic loading, but not non harmonic. Okay, non harmonic. When people jumping is like this. Okay, this is jumping, 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 and jumping. Then this is a periodic one, but not, not, not harmonic. The yeah, auto of blast uh, and blast. Blast is Let's here, know. actually. I mean, blast is actually here, which is a non periodic. Here, I ask you periodic, but non harmonic. So, so, isn't the so when you see. So isn't the movement of crankshaft are those periodic but non most sir? Uh, when we say periodic, it actually means it repeats itself at certain time, time interval. It repeats itself at certain time. If it's have these features, it's, it's uh, periodic but non-harmonic one. This is one case. This oh, is okay, a, okay. And then later, and later it repeats itself again. Uh, the same. Assume this is say. Uh, so this one is a periodic or non harmonic one. Okay? But when it's had only one case, you see only one this one. And this T is very let's see this is, this T is very short, it's impossible. Okay, so we call impossibility. Impossible load, not uh, uh, when we say periodic, it means it lasts forever, for, um, it continues forever. For theoretical, so this we call periodic loading. Uh, so, this is two types. Uh, when we uh, in chapter three, we will discuss this uh, uh, in more details. So, uh, we just skip this here, we cannot stay here too long. Uh, I mean, when chapter three, chapter four, we'll discuss about the periodic loading, periodic loading, and there we can discuss this uh, topic in more details. So here is some examples. This is a rotating machine. This is a sea view, and this is blast, and this is earthquakes. So the earthquakes means that it's a non-periodic, but uh, 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 here, if you know this, I mean, if you know this, Earthquakes already, you know the transfer. It's not a random one, it's a deterministic one. Because let's say at this time instant, you know the value of this here or here, you know the value of earthquakes. In this case, it's a deterministic load, not a random load. And if you only know, for, for instance, at this time instant, you only know the mean value of this earthquakes, like uh, 0 0.1 t. Or 0 0.2 g. Uh, this is the mean value, and this is a random one. It's random loading. So uh, not it doesn't mean that earthquake is random, always random. No, no. Uh, same uh, uh, applies to the uh, loading. If you already know the what temperature of the wind loads, wind pressure. It's a deterministic, one, not a dynamic, one, not a random. One. <coughs> okay. So, uh, 
this is uh, another topic uh, uh, of this uh, le lecture is uh, characteristics of dynamic problem or what is the difference between a static and a dynamic analysis so what is the difference between these two problems so i just give you the keywords the difference be between these two is we need to consider initial force in the dynamic problem okay in the static problem we don't consider about the initial force we see due to the movement of a mass okay the acceleration of a mass so this is initial force so the essential difference the key difference between the statistical and dynamic analysis is the initial force which means in all the problems we are going to study in this course later we consider about initial force okay initial force that's the key word then when you consider uh, the structure's behavior to resist the acceleration of the structure, which is uh, the reason for the initial force. And let me repeat it. Uh, let me read this. Uh, then we can uh, stop here. The initial force is the most important thing to, to distinguish, and distinguish the, the characters of the structural dynamic problems. Okay? <clears throat> so we stop here. We have a long break. I think you already know the uh, schedule of Tunzi uh, University. So we have a long break uh, uh, till 10 o'clock, Beijing time, okay? So we will uh, resume our class uh, at 10 o'clock, okay? Yeah, any questions you can ask me during this break. So have a good break. <laughs> I, I can't uh, hear clearly. Can you uh, repeat or just write, write down here in the small message? Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello? Yeah, I have a question about time, like, very long. What if, like, uh, very is very short? Can we consider it, like, uh, like, for a dynamic, like, the time varying is very, very short? Uh, is it still? Okay, this is a very good question related to this topic on the screen. I will explain it um, after 10 o'clock. Is that okay? So what is the, uh, what's the meaning of dependence? Or what, how short is a short? Is that your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, well, I will explain this, uh, uh, you know, uh, ne ne next class, next class. Because this is related to this one, actually, uh, what is the, the uh, what is the meaning of uh, uh, time varying? Uh, how to determine what is dynamic? What is dynamic? This is a very good question. Okay, I want to later. You can you can sing this now. Okay. Let me breathe. Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, start again. Let me answer the question first. What is dynamic? How short is a short? Uh, let me give you an example so we can uh, draw the conclusion together. See, uh, let me use this flower again. Can you see this flower? This is the flower. Yes. Yeah. Okay, suppose this is a high-rise building so with a big head. So this is a high-rise building with a big head. So if I have a low, you can see here, um, very, very slow. 
very, very slow apply to these structures. Very slow. You can see, you almost cannot uh, notice it. Say the end, you might be Sorry? Oh, uh, Professor, please okay. uh, resume Recall recording. This. Okay, okay, resume recording. Okay, thank you for remaining. Okay, let me repeat. So suppose this is a building, and then if we have a load applied to the top of the building very slowly, but it's moving. I can assure you that my, my finger is moving, moving very, very, very slow, but it's moving. So this is a dynamic loading or static loading. Static, but it's moving. It's time varying, but why is it static? Because maybe we can dynamic instead of but why? Why is uh, I agree with you. It can be it's a dynamic. Loading. Sorry, it's a dynamic loading. It is a dynamic loading. Yeah. Yes. Uh, someone says it's a dynamic loading. Someone says it's a static loading. No. Um, uh, it is a, we have only two choices. It's a, right? it's a dynamic yeah. loading because in dynamic systems, the load varies with time and the rate of loading affects the response. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. So that, it's a dynamic loading charge. It has reduced uh, the splash rate. Uh, okay. Uh, I, you are both right. Let me, let me, let me uh, tell you my uh, opinion. This is a dynamic loading because it's moving with time. It changes with time. So it's of course it's a dynamic loading. But we can treat it as a, we can take it as a static loading, or we can perform a static analysis. Why? Because move too slow cannot cause high acceleration, which means the initial force is limited, is very small. So we can ignore the initial force. So that's why this is the difference, which is a key point between static analysis and dynamic analysis, which means if the initial force you can ignore, which is very limited, very small, you can change the dynamic load into a static load, or you can treat the dynamic load as the static load. Taking this one as another example, if the P moves very, very slow applied to this, uh, this beam or this bridge, which means this one moves vertically very slow, uh, it, is a, it is a dynamic load, but costs limited, very little acceleration, very little initial force, we can treat it as a static one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, sorry. Question. Go ahead. Please. Uh, my question is like, for example, uh, it's moving slow. We are going to consider mm -hmm. the static load. So, like, how to? Because if we say it's a static load, it means you have one value. So, how to decide the value of the? Uh, time when like the the the, the, the value is very slow like how to set it as a no. yes i'm going to to uh, answer this question so uh, let's see if do you know the the the, the uh, because uh, we still not uh, uh, you know talk about that concept so the, the natural frequency the vibration frequency structure, the period okay then that makes this uh, very simple See if this the natural frequency of this this beam here showing on this screen is one second. Okay, we we'll just assume this. This is one second. So if this the the this uh, this this dynamic load the period on the natural frequency of this dynamic load is one hour, one hour, which means moves very. Uh, one hour and go back, one hour and go back, which is a period of the load. <clears throat> so this is a dynamic loading. This this is dynamic loading or static loading. I, of course, it's dynamic loading. Can we treat it as static loading? Uh, because? Why? Uh, very slow. Because 
the period of the low is very, very long than the period or the, 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 uh, than the, the beam. Or in another way, the frequency of the load is very, very low compared to the very frequency of the structure. Right? So not the same. So that's why that's the reason we can treat it as a uh, as a static loading. If we can draw this, let me try again. Let me try. Let me try this. Let me try this. Uh, this is a too difficult. Right, using this uh, mouse. So this is, let's see. This is the vibration curve of this structure natural uh, free vibration curve, which means this, this period, because this is the period, one second, okay, one second, as they just uh, assume. And if the dynamic load, the vertical load, the vertical load of P is a dynamic one, because you have the, let's assume it's a piece of one, uh, with the period, with the period is one hour. So which means it should be like this. Here is the 0 0.5 hour. Okay, so which means this moves very, very slow compared to the period or dynamic property of the structures. The structures. So that's why we can treat it as a, uh, you know, as a static loading, which means the reference. Uh, Several students asked this question, uh, how short is short, or what is uh, the, the slow, how, how slow is slow, it, it compares to the uh, period of the structure or natural frequency of the structure, is compared to that. Let's say your frequency is uh, 10 times or your period is 10 times lower, uh, 10 times higher than, the, uh, than, the, uh, than that of the structure, it's a slow loading, it's very, very slow, it moves. It changes very slow. It costs little initial force or little acceleration. So it depends on your judge. You see? So what it is a, a static loading or a dynamic loading. So, uh, let me let me give you this example uh, again. Uh, do you know the wind load? If uh, there, uh, you can see. I, I hope you can see this. Is a do we have the? Uh, let me see. I already opened this uh, uh, camera. So if you have this, we have wind load. Okay, wind load. There are two components in the wind load. One is the uh, so-called mean wind speed. The other is the turbulence. Turbulence, okay? The turbulence is very fast. You know, moves very, but this uh, mean wind moves very slow. It's a period of about 10 minutes, or 10 minutes or one minute, or one minute or 10 minutes. And then we usually fix this, uh, uh, this uh, mean wind speed as a uh, static loading. So we don't treat it as a uh, dynamic loading. Although, uh, though it uh, actually moves, it's a very, very slow train, move train. Because its period is about 10 minutes or at least one minute. And do you know that the, the, the period, the vibration period of a high-rise building, let's say 500 meters period, uh, building, what is uh, uh, about the period, the period of the uh, 500 meters building? Like Shanghai Center, if you know, we have a uh, building here, Shanghai Center, whose uh, height is uh, 632 meters. And it's natural period is about 12 seconds, which means 12 seconds means this. The vibrates here, and here, and here, and back to the original position. It takes 12 seconds. Okay, 12 seconds. But the, the, wind, the mean wind is at least one minute, which means, the, it means like here, if, if it is a harmonic one, then go back here, takes one minute. So when we, when we decide the dynamic or static, it depends on the acceleration and compares to the vibration of the structure itself. So we have more examples later to show you uh, the difference. So uh, 
I think we move on here. Okay, we 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 just uh, go ahead. Okay, any any further question here? Uh, respected professor, I have one question. Uh -huh. uh, how we can decide that uh, uh, this uh, load can be converted into static load or dy dynamic? Means uh, how can we decide about the timing? It's slower or it's faster? I think I will answer this question. All right. I mean, you just uh, compare to the dynamic property of structures the, uh, to determine, to decide whether it's a low loading or fast loading, uh, whether you can treat it as a static or dynamic one. It depends on the structure your analysis. I think we still have a, a chance later to further discuss this. Uh, then uh, if you don't have, because we still have uh, 30 slides to go, and then I think we, we, we still not touch the, the key point of today's lecture, how to derive the equation motion. So we move on here. Later, if you have a question. <clears throat> and this is the, the first thing. What's the difference between the dynamic uh, static analysis and dynamic analysis? And then another thing that we need to uh, model the structure, or, the, or here it's called a uh, discretization of the structure. You have a real structure, we need to model this into a mathematical model uh, or an analytical model, then we can uh, build, we can develop the equation motion for that model. And there are basically three ways to, uh, to model the structure. One is the left mass procedure, the other is what we call generalized displacement, or generalized coordinates. And then the third one is we call finite element concept. And along with these three methods or procedures, we have the, the concept called degree of freedom, okay? Uh, as single degree of freedom, multi degree of freedom, distribute parameters of system. Uh, this is the uh, uh, whole, so we, we discuss this together. So this is three ways to idealize the structure. So you're taking this P as an example, if you have a, a load here, uh, which is a, have a T which move changes with time, and then, uh, then if we, we cannot ignore this initial force, then this uh, dynamic problem. And to analyze this uh, structure, we have three ways, okay, this is a measure. One is we concentrate the mass. So let's here, we concentrate mass here, uh, the center of this beam, and this is one force, uh, one force span of this, this beam or this bridge. Here we have three lamp mass. So we have three lamp mass. <clears throat> this is one way we call uh, the lamp mass procedure. So why we concentrate the mass? Why we don't concentrate, let's see, the space or other, other properties? Why we concentrate the mass? Because we consider of the initial force. That's the, the key point. I, I, I repeat it again and again and again. Because for dynamic analysis, you need to consider of initial force. And initial force related to mass and acceleration. So then you need to describe the movement of each mass. And each mass. For this one, because the mass is distributed. So we concentrate the mass here, mass here, mass here. And suppose this one moves only in the vertical plane, in, in this plane, and vertically. There's no rotation here for the mass. So how many uh, DUF, which means the degree of freedom, how many degree for this one? It's three. So we need one coordinate here, one coordinate here, one coordinate here to describe this mass, this mass, this mass. <clears throat> so the, 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 the definition of the, the DOF is, is called, <clears throat> sorry, the number of displacement components which must be considered in order to represent the effects of all significant initial force of the structure is termed DOF. Is termed DOF. This is called uh, DOFs. So in the seven chapters, we only discuss, uh, eight, eight chapters, we only discuss, discuss with one DOF, which is called single degree of freedom system.
Uh, let me try. We need to uh, do some practice uh, along with this idea. Uh, let me try if I can change to my pad so I can write down some examples. Uh, let me try again. One minute. I need to stop this one first. Sorry. I need to try this because it's too difficult to write using the mouse. So I need to try my pad. So I can. Okay. Let me try here. Can you see the uh, uh, white pad? Can you see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, professor. Okay, I will try write this write this down here. So, if this is a structure, this is a, a, a let's see a, a frame or, or, or a, a represent alpha structure. Is yes. so how many views of this system? Any other any other answers? Why only one? Uh, you can move because the here. mass is lumped uh, at one point. It can move here, so you have you need two. One is here, one is here vertically. Is now it's two degree of so it's two okay yes it's two okay uh okay if we have additional mass here uh, let me write it again it's like here the same we have one mass here one mass here how many Four. Four. Same. The same as this one is it's um, two. How many here? Uh sorry, I, I, I forgot to mention uh, some uh, assumptions. I uh, usually for the frame we uh, we don't consider about the, the actual uh de actual deformation, which means that the beam, the length of the beam, the length of the column doesn't change, doesn't change. And there's no shear uh deflection, no shear deflection. And also, this one is a rigid uh, joint. This is a rigid joint. So, uh, I sorry, I forgot to mention all these assumptions. But this one is true, okay? Because you only need uh, one is vertical, one is uh, horizontal, and it's uh, enough for you to uh, describe the movements of this, this, uh, this system. Okay, let me try another one. Let us try another one. So, this is a. Uh, Sorry, it's too, too, too sick. So how many for this one? It's a rigid one. beam. The beam is a rigid one. <clears throat> one. Yeah. Right. Uh, one. We, we only need the horizontal uh, horizontal movement. So that's uh, that's only one. Okay. So let's let's do another one. Sorry, this is a straight line. Straight. Not right is very straight. How many do you have? One, I think. One, yeah. Mm. Two, two. One, two. Do we have another 
How's there? Three. Okay, I see three. One, two, three. You have four, five, six. Only one. one. Okay, because uh, we need only one independent coordinates to describe all this move, all this movement. Of course, you know the less. Okay, uh, forget this. Uh, we know the less. And we know each of this, the location of each of this mass, okay, each of this mass, we know uh, its uh, location, uh, we know this location, because this one is rigid, which means this one is rigid bar, okay, rigid bar. You need only one coordinates, one independent coordinates to describe this. So, for, for example, if we use, we use, when it moves, it's like this, right? So if we use this one as a theta, if we use the theta as the coordinates, then you can determine the movements of every mass, every mass at any time instant. So we need only one. So this is a one degree of freedom system, single degree of freedom system. Because, uh, I mean, independent. If you use this one, let's see, you have used it y1, uh, y2, uh, y3, y4, y5. They are coordinates. They are not independent. Okay, they are not independent. Of course, you can, if you, you don't like this six, you can use like uh, y5. You can use this one. The movement of y as a coordinate is okay. You can use this one because you can use this one to represent this one, represent this one, this one, this one by the uh, triangle roots because it's rigid bar. Okay, rigid bar. They are they are the movement up here will depend uh, well uh, turning this one, this one, this one, this. So you need only one coordinate, one coordinate. You don't need like two or three or, or five. You don't need that. We don't need that. So this is uh, 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 this is uh, the same uh, we need uh, to to discuss. I think uh, we will have uh, maybe more example later when we uh, have time. I see some. Uh, uh, okay. I don't have any specific questions, so I need to go back to uh, you know change back to the slide. Can I ask a Please. Uh, what is sure. about this one? Uh, if EI is not like infinite, oh, if not infinite, you you need to consider oh well, about this five, okay? Because they're independent, the movements of this one will will change, so you need five. Okay. Okay. It's like it's like right. Like uh, we just mentioned like this beam, we just mentioned like this beam, just like concentrate this mass here. This is EI, right? I just show you the, the example on the side. In this case, you have three, okay? So this is the same for this one. If this, this EI is not, it's, it's just, uh, you have, uh, then you, you, need, you need five, one in this. It's actually the same. They are the same. Same. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, no. And we go back to my side. This one first. Uh, I, we need, you know, change this from here to there because of the online teaching. Hope you can try. Need to uh, share my screen again. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, so the independent. Okay, independent corners. Uh, <clears throat> So this is one way we, we use the left mass, and the second one is uh, called uh, the uh, generalized displacement. We will discuss this uh, this later uh, in chapter eight, but I just gave you the concepts. 
you can see this this let's see this is the beam or a bridge and the real real displacement is like here the, the curved line here this is the real uh of this structure if we use uh, if we use the uh, lamp mass you can see here one two three you need only three uh, colonies which is here and here and here which you can see that it's not accurate because the the, the, the change of this beam is very complex you use only three it's not enough so maybe you need increase four five increases but we have a different way so the different way is like this this curve actually this curve this this is the real displacement okay real displacement this real displacement can be ex expressed as a sum of a series of specified displacement patterns, which will show function. Like this is a half sine, this is one sine wave, this is 1.5 sine, which means the combination of these three can represent this real, uh, real deflection or real displacement. So the equation is like this. So this is a function of this one, this first one, the second one, third one. And for each one time the uh, coefficient, so B1, B2, B3, B1, B2, B3. If you use only three, it should be Vx equals to B1, then this curve, B2, then curve, and B3 curve, and they got uh, approximately to this real curve. And you, you can increase the number. You can increase, let's say, the force, which is a, a two half, a two sine wave, and 2.5 and 3. You can increase the number of this and to represent this. So actually, we change this into the combination into this one. We use this one. Actually, we, we need to determine this one because this one we assume we know. We already know this. It's specified. Specified. <clears throat> Uh, function, spectral pattern. So we need to determine this. Uh, what I can tell you that if we use only three, showing here one, two, three, uh, the, the degree of freedom is three. So it's B1, B2, B3. Okay, the degree of freedom for this, for this structure in this manner is three. And this three, this here is three. Okay, one, two, three. And this three will give you more accurate uh, results compared to, okay, compared to this one. And because the B1, B2, B3, they don't have a, a very clear physical meaning. So we call this as generalized, dis generalized coordinates or generalized displacement. Generalized uh, uh, displacement. So this is what we call uh, generalized displacement method to model the structure, to model the structure. Uh, we, we will use this idea in chapter eight to, to do a uh, so-called generalized SDF system. And we use this idea. Actually, this idea is very useful. You can use this idea to, to solve any problem, linearly, uh, any problem. You can use, you just assume this shape function. This shape function you need to assume first. Before you use this idea, you need uh, what is the shape function for this structure? Okay, so this is uh, the the, uh, the second way. So from assumed shape uh, patterns represent the number of degree of freedom considered in the form idealization. So in general, the better accuracy can be achieved in a dynamic analysis for a given a number of degree of freedom by using the shape functions rather than the lamp approach. As I just mentioned, you use three lamp maths and three functions. The later one will give you higher accuracy, better accuracy. Okay, so this is the difference between these two. So can I ask you a question? Uh, what is the drawback? What is the disadvantage of this method? And what is the disadvantage of this method? Anyone share your opinion? Yeah. Uh, like sometimes may have so many degrees of freedom, right? Mm -hmm. We might have like a lot of degrees of freedom if the maybe if it's a bit complex. 
So maybe uh, the calculation load will be a little bit uh, much. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any? Uh, let's focus on this one first. What is the uh, drawback uh, disadvantage of this lat mass procedure? I think you you uh, you just mentioned that we need more lat mass points to increase accuracy, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, of course, it's drawbacks because the uh, in the real structure is not the mass is not lamped. In very special cases, you can use this, which give you a very accurate result. For instance, you have a, a tower like the water tank. So I don't know if you, you have this in your in your country or not. Like like this, you have uh, uh, this is a truss. This is a water tank. You have water inside. Okay, you have water inside. No, sorry, this should like this. Oh no! <clears throat> so water tank. So because this is very heavy, so you can like concentrate the mass here. So it's like like here, and this uh, this truss will provide the stiffness, and this one provide mass. So they can land concentrate mass here. So in this case, it will give you accurate, um, very uh, accurate results. Uh, for this the lamp mass method. But in this case, three is not as I just mentioned. But if you increase more, like five or even six, still uh, maybe not very, very good result you can get. So it's just an approximation of the real structures. So this is its drawback. But it will give you a simple function if you use the lamp mass because the location of the mass is fixed. I mean the 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 the, the, the corners, horizontal corner x x one x two x three the x is fixed so you can know you just uh, worry about vertical one. So this is uh, the, the the drawbacks. So how what is the drawbacks shortcomings of this one of this procedure? For the generalized displacement. So what is uh, the advantage of uh, disadvantage of this one? Anyone have a I do. I think, I think uh, so. at least because we have to assume different shapes or a real structure which is complex, it is um, difficult to um, determine the deflected shape. Very good. I think uh, you, you, you just mentioned the key points. Because when we're using this method, we need to determine the shape function first like this one and this one and this one. For this beam is very, uh, maybe very easy. Let me give you another example. If, if you have a cantilever beam, a cantilever, which is very simple, right? And, uh, like load here on the end of this cantilever beam. What is the shape function of this guy? You need to assume this, okay? You need to assume, and this should be, uh, <clears throat> uh, it should be independent. It should be linearly independent, these two shapes. You cannot just assume a, a regular or random shape function. This one and this one and this one. There should be some rules, limitations determined. So the, the main drawbacks uh, of this method is you need to uh, assume, you need to know the shape function first, and which is a difficult task for some uh, complex structure, as you just mentioned. So this is uh, the, the, the drawbacks of these two uh, matter. So that's why we give you the three one, the third one, the finite element method, uh, which is uh, the most popular uh, method these days to model a structure, to realize a structure. But uh, unfortunately, this is uh, it itself is a uh, is a big topic. So we just uh, give you very basic concept here, <clears throat> very basic concept here, uh, because we don't use we don't use this very often in this course. It's like this: you have a structure here showing here. You have uh, you you have a cantilever uh, part here. This is a, a continuous beam, and we divided this beam into different segments. So you, between each segment, this is segment A, B, C, D, E, F. So we have different segments. 
And between each segment, we have joints. So you have joint here, joint here, joint here, joint here, joint here, and joint here. So we have uh, sect joints. And when we calculate, we only consider about the, the displacement at the joints, each joint, the joint here, the joint here, the joint here, the joint here, joint here, joint here, joint here, which means you, you, only, you only use coordinates to describe the movement of the joints, the location of the joints. So, so we have one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we only describe these joints. It's like the lamp mass. You, you like you have a lamp mass here, a lamp mass here, 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 lamp mass here. Lamp mass here. So, uh, <clears throat> so it, it has the advantage of the lamp mass master. We use only limited location, limited joints. And between these joints, between, let's say between the, the three and four, between these joints, we know this, we, we assume the shape function beforehand. And the shape function is applicable, is tenable for all the segments, which means for this one, and for this segment, 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 they use the same shape function. They use the shape, same shape functions. <clears throat> now in this way, you can enjoy the general coordinates uh, method, the advantage of the general coordinates method. So uh, let me let me repeat this. So when we calculate, we only calculate the displacement here, here at the joint. And between the joint, what is the displacement between these two joints? You use the shape function. You use the shape function. So by this way, you can determine every point, the de deflection of every point inside uh, of this beam. And the advantage here is that you can use the unified, unified shape function for all these segments as long as they are the same type, like a beam element or shell element or plate element or a bar element, as long as they are the same type, you can use the same shape function. Let's go back to this cantilever beam. If you, again, you use a cantilever beam here, is, uh, you can use this one, you, you just uh, divide it into different segments here. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four segments. And you have four joints here, one, uh, two, uh, actually five, three, and you have n here. Later you will introduce the limitation, then this one cancel. So you have uh, this joint, then you look the lamp mass. And then you use the coordinate to describe this this four. And between this two, between this two, between this two, between this two you use the same shape function as as this one. As this one. If you divide it into because it's a beam element. It's a beam element. You can use the same function, same shape function for this element, this element, this element. So that's why it's uh, uh, it's it's applicable to any type of structures. So the finite element method. It's why it's very powerful. Uh, this is the reason. This is the reason why it's very powerful because <clears throat> and the desired number of a joint can be introduced uh, by dividing the structure into a pro approximate numbers of segments. So you, you have to use the, uh, certain segments, and then uh, the interpolation function is so called uh, the shape function you can use the same type of elements, the same, uh, and therefore you can uh, apply this to any type of structures. Okay, basically we have these three ways, okay, three ways. And all these ways is degree of freedom, we just mentioned this. Um, here I just repeat this definition, the number of independent, okay, independent displacement required to define uh, the displaced position of all the masses related to the original position is called number of degree of freedom. Okay, this is for dynamic analysis. And this is another definition, I will not repeat. I just uh, show you, uh, or I ask you another uh, example. If we have a pendular here, uh, this is a mass, and uh, you have a pin here, this is a rigid, rigid bar. So it's uh, like uh, like the, the pendulum, okay, the pendulum. 
So how many do you have here? How many here? Two. I have two. Do I have any other answers? One. No, I think one uh, degree of freedom. One. Because you know this this length of this this is a rigid one. Okay. Rigid one. When you said two, I think you know you mean this is one. This is another one, which means x and y. But here you know this independent. Are these two independent? Which okay. means x and y. They are not independent, right? They are limited. Huh? They are limited but, by this length of the L. Which means x power of 2x squared plus y squared should equals to L squared. <clears throat> Only one. Fine. Only one. You mm. will use this one. We use this theta. We use this theta as uh, independent coordinates. Okay, independent coordinates. So we use only one. Or only one degree of freedom for this one. Again, here, independent. Okay, independent. So we use independent coordinates. So uh, later, if we have time, we can. I think we have uh, only three minutes for this 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 time. So we, we maybe we we'll do one more uh, one more case. Let me let me draw it uh, here. Try. Uh, maybe we we wrap it here. So uh, let's see if we have two pendulums. One is this one. We have a mass. This is a rigid one. Okay. We have another one connected to this. This is another mass. I'm sorry about my. So any L1, let's see, this is L1, this is L2, and this is M1, uh, and one, this is M2. M2. How many do you have here? Two. Two. two, sir. Two. Okay, two. Of course, it's two. So, because we, yeah. okay, so this is a right answer, only half. Can we use this one, X? And this one x2 as the two coordinates. No, no, no. no. why? But why? Why not? Because x is not independent. They depend on the rotational. Yes. Rotational. Yes. Very good. Very good. If you use x1 here, I'm sorry. It's just, uh, uh, if you use x1 here as the one coordinates and x1 he x2 here, they are not independent. They are connected. <clears throat> so you already will use this theta as one and this theta as two. So these two are independent. So these two are independent to describe at any time instance. No matter what the position of these two uh, mass, you can use these two uh, angles to describe their location. Okay, and they, these two are independent. So independent, this is very, very important. So the number of independent displacement required to find the position of all the mass. Because what mass? Because we need consider inertial force. And we need independent coordinates. So there's one minute. We can we can have one more case. Just now we, we consider about pendulum. pendulum. And which is a rigid bar, like here. Okay, rigid bar. Oh, okay, so just now it's the rigid bar. But if this one is a is a spring, not without this line, it's a spring. How many? How many do you have? It's not a rigid bar because this uh, this this is a two. spring here. Two. 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 Right, oh, it's oh, two. Oh. You can use the, the lens of here, which means that the extension of this lens is x, and also this uh, angle. You can use this two to describe uh, this uh, uh, the the location of the mass. Okay, describe the location of the mass. So this is a uh, this actually have the uh, background physical background for this model. We have real uh, structural system. You can simplify. It as a, a 
pendulum or as a pendulum with a spring with a spring okay another break five minutes uh, we will resume our class at uh, 10 50 okay see you five minutes later Excuse me, sir. Hey, please. Sir, I have a, a question. About what? Uh, sir, can we say that uh, degree of freedom is uh, like uh, number of possible movement of a member or mass? Uh, I think you just... Uh, uh, use the idea given uh, the definition given by the uh by the uh, textbook because they are very very uh how to say strict i i don't suggest uh, you to 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 de define this uh, by yourself <laughs> that may be uh, yes sir yeah yes sir that's why i have just uh, wanted to ask so the keywords is like independent okay yes. independent then the uh, the the, the the last number of independent colonies. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That's uh, the DOFs. Okay, that's the DOF. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Slide. So uh, here is a point, the key part of today's lecture: uh, how we derive the equation of motion. First, we need to know the basic components of SDF system, and basically there are three uh, components for the SDF system. One is a resisting force of the spring, like K here. It provides a resisting force, uh, which means we uh, always take the system back to its uh, uh, equilibrium position. And the second one is the damping force, which uh, dissipates, dissipates the energy of the vibration. It will stop the vibration, uh, finally. Because there's damping and the, stop, the vibration, if there's no external loading, 
uh, then it will stop finally because of the damping, uh, initial force. Because there's acceleration, there's a mass, so there's initial force. So uh, this one related to, to spring K, to related to, <coughs> to the uh, restoring force. And the spring elements, we, uh, in our uh, cross, we only consider the linear uh, position. So there's a linear relationship between the force and the elevation uh, displacement. So which is the spring force provided Fs equals to K times E. And there's a spring, uh, the spring also serves an energy store storage device. Uh, the string energy store storage in this uh, device is V equals to uh, equation. So this, I think the familiar with this is uh, usually you see F equals to KX. So X is the dis displacement or elongation of this, or con con contraction also elongation or contraction of this spring, linear spring. So this is uh, the, uh, the, the spring element. And the damping element is very tricky. Later, I think we will have uh, uh, one uh, discuss this uh, damping <coughs> in more details. Now we just simple model for this. Uh, we use this, we, sometimes we call it a viscous dashboard model. The damping force provided by this is like this. This is the coefficient. This is velocity. Okay, this is velocity, which means the force, of the, the damping force is related to the uh, velocity of this, the, the system. It moves the velocity. It's uh, proportional to the velocity. <clears throat> and the C is the so based on this, I mean, based on these three elements, which is spring, dashboard, or damping force, and the mass, and we can model, we can develop the equation of motions of the system. And then we can develop the, the, uh, uh, the equation of motion, then we can solve it to, to get the answers. So there are basic two ways to develop the mathematical model uh, of the uh, dynamic uh, system of the system. <clears throat> One is uh, uh, we call new uh, mechanics, uh, or sometimes we call vectoral uh, mechanics. And the second one we call is analytical mechanics, or sometimes we call large uh, mechanics. Both are two uh, extremely big professors or big researchers. I think you are, you, you are too familiar with this guy. <clears throat> the, the, so we basically have these two, two ways. And if we, in, in details, in more, uh, more specifically, we can have these methods. One is the Newton second law. We can use the Newton second law to, uh, to build the uh, equation of motion. And all we can use the uh, uh, Dalbert's principle to use the direct equilibrium which is a way sometimes we call dynamic equilibrium to, to, develop, to develop the equation of motion. And then we can use the principle of virtual displacement or uh, variational or Lagrangian equation to develop equation of motions. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, I think you're too familiar with this uh, Newton's second law. So I, I don't like to re re read this. We just use this to to build the, to develop the model of the SDF system. Uh, so I have to, sorry, I have to, you know, move back to my pad. Then we can uh, develop. Do, do I need to do this? Or you are already familiar with this method? I mean, I think this is a very easy, uh, but I don't know whether you are familiar with this one or not. Yes. Let me, you are already familiar. So I don't need to go back, right? Yeah. I try, I try here because it takes time. I, I try here. Yeah, I can. I think this idea is very, very easy because uh, normally we use this uh, to model uh, the SDF system. One is, uh, uh, one is a dashboard and the other is a key and this is a mess. And this is a mess here. 
and it moves. And you have uh, external uh, force, which is uh, that PT. I, I try to write it clearly. Oh, it's high. <clears throat> then we have the coordinates, like, like, like we use U or X or Y, it doesn't matter. So let's use X. And if we use the Newton's second law, moves moves this way, this is a positive direction. So we, we use, we cut free, we cut free this mass out. And we have PT, I just use this one, this is T, because it's a positive, uh, positive direction here. And then we have, you see, we have the, <clears throat> this is provided by the spring, this is a restoring force, it's always back to his, uh, uh, to his equilibrium position, so it should be this direction, okay, this direction. So it's uh, Kx, it should be Kx, so Kx, and then this way, so right this way, is uh, the so-called damping force. Okay, the damping force is related to the, because we use the uh, viscous damping model, related to the velocity, and uh, proportional to the velocity, so it should be C, uh, C <coughs> x dot. And the Newton's second law is like F equals to MA, which is the simplest uh, deflection or simplest uh, model. Like here, F equals to MA. The F is uh, all the summation of all the force. It should be P, so with PT. I just uh, ignore the, the, the T here. And then PT minus, because uh, this minus KX. So minus C x dot, right, equals to M A means here means x dot, x two dots, x two dots, so x two dots. So this is a, we got the equation of motion based on the Newton second law. And then move this to the to, to this side, to bring this together. So it it became the final equation of motion for the SDF system, which is uh, the most famous, I mean, not famous, the, the, the equation where were you, oh, sorry, it should be C, many times, C uh, dot plus Kx equals to, to P, okay, equals to P. So this is a, uh, uh, <clears throat> and Newton's second law. And if we use D'Alembert's principle, I just uh, use D'Alembert principle, you, you have another force here, which is the imaginary force, which is uh, the initial force, right? The initial force also is uh, opposite to the movement of the, of the mass. So another force here, which is uh, mx dot, because it's uh, related to the acceleration. And then you have uh, this, and this, this, all this force should be balanced with dynamic equilibrium. So again, you got this equation. So based on this two ways, you can do it. Okay, someone close your mic hole, okay? The child is, uh, oh, sorry, maybe not the child. A, a child is, uh, we, we can hear his voice. <clears throat> so this is uh, how we get this equation of motion uh, by this, uh, so, so here, uh, and then you can use different ways. And actually, we can use any um, more, many, many different ways to, to derive the equation of motion. Uh, I'm afraid I have to go back to my pad again, so we can use uh, different, I can show you uh, different ways to derive the equation of motions. Okay, to, to, uh, in the minutes, I, I changed my pad. Okay, let's uh, try a different way to, uh, to, to, to derive the equation of motion, which is very, very famous. 
and it's like that. kx dot plus cx dot plus kx uh, equals to k. <clears throat> so we try a different, we, we try the energy. So the, 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 the energy of this system should be, <clears throat> uh, let's see the energy of the system. The energy of the system should be what? Okay, the energy of the system. Anyone? Then we have a system like here, like here. Potential energy. The energy, uh, kinetic and potential energy together. Can we can put them together? So it should be uh, the total, the total energy. So it should be two one k x squared, right? Okay. And one more. Plus any 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 more? Plus what? <clears throat> plus one half one over two m x dot right mm. then squared mm. so this is the energy right yeah. okay so uh, uh, I know there are um, uh, about uh, about uh, six six method or six uh, six or seven ways to derive the equation of motion for the STFs. This is one, just one way. So what is the meaning of DE over DT? Instant energy, what, what is the meaning? This is the power, right? I think you already forgot this. Uh, let me close this, this guy. Uh, you. Sorry, I have to close your Michael. It's making noise. <clears throat> so this is a uh, power. Okay. So let's do this uh, calculation. It should be k x then x dot then plus m x dot x dot dot. <clears throat> right. So the, the power, and also you can use the power of the external loads, uh, external loads, it should be uh, PT, uh, sorry, PT. Which means force times velocity is, is power. If you still remember, the PT X dot, this is power, and also you need to, uh, to to uh, cons consider the, the power uh, dissipated by, by this dashboard. So it should be CX dot, this is force, then times X dot, this is power. Okay, this is power. <clears throat> this two should be balanced, right? Because the power should be balanced. So it should be KX X dot plus MX X dot, then uh, equals to PT x dot pt sorry minus c x dot x dot x dot because this this equation stands for any time instant so any time instant which means you can cancel this we can cancel this so you can well uh, should be two dots i'm oh, sorry the one dot one dot here cancel this cancel this cancel this and you can rearrange this equation, it becomes mx dot plus cx dot plus px equals to pt. So this is another way uh, you can derive the equation of motion. You can derive the equation of motion of this uh, system, uh, of the uh, single degree of freedom uh, system. <clears throat> of course, you can use uh, many uh, Principles, methods you used in the structural analysis or structural mechanics to, uh, to, to, to derive the equation of motion of a system. Let's try uh, a different, sorry. Okay. So let's consider a, a different problem. You have, uh, let's see, we have a structure which can be modeled like this, this is the PT, and this is K, it's, sorry, it should not be K, it's uh, EI, EI, L, mass, 
we can use the flexibility method. And I'm familiar with flexibility. So what is the flexibility of a cantilever beam? Anyone still remember? Which means if you have a, a one, uh, one, one unit deformation, so what is the force you applied? <clears throat> what is the force you applied? And it should be, uh, just a reminder, you should be L3, 3i. So this is uh, the uh, the flexibility of a cantilever B, of a cantilever B. And then if you use, let me, let me show you, if you use this as X, which means this moves here, this, this is X, <clears throat> Then the the, uh, the force we apply to this structure can be this PT minus minus or we use the flexibility mass minus the initial force. Okay, minus the initial force, which should be y x dot so y x dot <clears throat> because it's it's is a different directions. So this one times delta should equals to what? No response. It should equal to, to x, right? Because this is due to unit force, and this is actual force. So this is flexibility method, okay? Flexibility method. So then you bring these things into this, uh, bring here, we bring this, then you can have the final uh, expressions for this, 3EI L3 X equals to PT, equals to PT. <clears throat> so this is the final uh, equation of motion for this system. Yeah, today you have homework similar to this. You can derive the equation of motion for the system. And if you, you, you can just uh, know that this is actually the K, right? If you have a cantilever beam with EIL, then the K, horizontal, the K is actually 3EI equals to L3, right? This is just uh, the, the, the K. So if you use K directly, you can get MX dot K, because this is K, right? KX equals to PT. <clears throat> So this, this is uh, the, uh, we can use different ways. We can use uh, different ways to get the uh, equation of motion uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the system, for the SKF system. And also we can use uh, the so-called uh, Lagrange equation uh, because we will uh, discuss, discuss the Lagrange equation at uh, chapter uh, 16. So we, we can leave this until that that chapter. So any questions this part? You have homework to do to to do uh, to derive the equation of motion for several systems today. And homework you should submit your homework uh, before next lecture, which means before next uh, Friday, uh, then you we have a deadline there. You need to submit your homework uh, through the Canvas system, electronic uh, homework, then you can PDF, Word, or anything. Uh, you can take photo, and anything you like. You can uh, then submit your home. I will give you the homework in a Word file, the file, word, word format file. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm not clear. Do you recommend any specific books for your course? Books. Specific what? Books, books. For study, books. Specific box? Sorry, books? Sorry, I, I didn't. Book, book, book. Ah, uh, no. Uh, you need to know some uh, basic uh, mechanic, like here, what's the meaning of this one? L3, uh, a power of 3 divided by 3 EI. This is, uh, I think, from a structural mechanics or structural analysis. You need to know this, to, to know this. 
And if you forget this, you need, I mean, refer to your uh, your book uh, related to structural and mechanics. We don't need very spe special uh, books to do the homework. If we have time later, I'll show you the homework. assignment, handwritten assignment. You can submit what your assignment what? Written in PDF form. PDF form. You you mentioned that. Actually, he mentioned, can we submit our, our homework, uh, PDF or what, what file like that? Uh, of course, you can submit it to PDF, Word, any, any format you like. It's just uh, electronic. I can open that. That's, that's okay. Okay? Okay, thank because you. Because I gave you, I gave you the, the homework in a Word file. So if you write your homework, you, you take pictures and insert into a uh, like Word file, you, you can submit it like a Word, or you can just uh, turn it into a PDF. It's okay. You don't have uh, special requirements for the formats of your answer, of your assignments. Okay. Again. Then uh, slide. Share the screen. It's not very convenient. Okay, so uh, we have still have other methods, vir virtual displacement. So for simple uh, system, you use the Newton method. It's very easy. Uh, maybe you're, it's not very easy for you to use a Lagrange equation or virtual displacement, but for complex system, especially for system with uh, rigid bodies, like rigid bar, uh, rigid, uh, rigid parts, you, you, you can use a, a Lagrange equation virtual displacement to derive the equation of motion, which will be more convenient. So I, I will not repeat this. I, I, I hope you know. I assume you know this. Like this, we have a system showing here. So this is uh, the uh, this is a rigid bar, rigid bar, and uh, uh, we need you to derive the equation of motion. This is a single degree of freedom system because it's a rigid, and the gravity of the beam is uh, we don't consider the gravity of the beam. Okay, so we don't need to consider about the gravity force. Then assume the rotation of the beam around the hinge is very small. Here is the, uh, we, we always discuss about very uh, small amplitude vibration. So this is the uh, rotation is very small, uh, which means sine theta equal uh, approximate to theta, like that. <clears throat> then we need to derive the equation of motion. So you can use different ways. You can use Newton method. You can use uh, some balance of the moment here. Uh, if you use the D'Alembert's principle, you can use moment balance here, or you can use Newton law. You can use here. We use uh, the virtual uh, displacement. So if we take this one, the, the rotation angle as a uh, uh, coordinate, as a degree of freedom, and the virtual displacement along positive direction should be here which is delta theta. So this theta is an uh, independent coordinate. So this is delta theta. And the vertical displacement correspond to the uh, delta theta should be delta y. So which is delta y equals to uh, here x times delta theta. Because it's, uh, so it's showing here the y x t is x sine theta because it's a very small rotation. So it's approximately to x times theta. So x times theta. And this is uh, the external force. It's a triangle force. So it's a triangle force starting from the, the uh, here, this triangle force, and change uh, <clears throat> with its amplitude. So it's P0t times x root uh, divided by L, divided by L. So this is, uh, uh, this is the force at any x, any x from here, any x, the force. So it's like here. So we have this things. Then we wrote all the external force. So we have restoring, uh, restoring force here, k, y, a, t, because the k is fixed. 
the k is here. So the displacement of the k or the elongation of the k should be k times the vertical displacement. So the vertical displacement should be a times theta, right? Because uh, small rotation. So it's uh, uh, y a t should a times theta because the time variance of a theta t. And then damping force. You have a dashboard here. So the dashboard, the vertical velocity here should be L times theta dot, right? Times theta dot, then times C. So C L theta dot. So it should be C Y dot, it should be C L theta dot. So this is a damping force. So the damping force. And then the initial force. The initial force, because this is a, has a, a distributed mass, so distribute mass, you should consider of each segment, small segment. So see we have uh, x, though we have dx here, we have a dx. So the mass of this part should be m dx. Let me write this down. So if we have uh, x here, we take a very small part here, which is uh, dx. The length of this part is dx. So the mass of this part should be mdx, mdx. So this is the, the, <clears throat> the mass of this part. And then the acceleration of this part should be x times theta dot dot, two dots. So it should be, you see, this one, and this one is a mass, and this one is a vertical acceleration. So vertical acceleration. <clears throat> Because it's uh, opposite to the uh, to the to the positive direction, so we have minus here, and uh, of course you can also have the minus there. Uh, later we will consider about the the, the, the force. Then you have all these uh, minus here, <clears throat> and then the external force. We just know the external force here, and from this point you can use different ways because you all. You already know all this uh, uh, force. You can use the moment, you can use the walk, you can use the balance of the force, you can use different ways. Here you use uh, the virtual walk. So this is uh, the force, uh, the virtual walk down by the external force. So you have uh, at each point you integrate from zero to L, the whole length because it's a triangle one. So you, this is at X, the force, then zero to that one, then you have uh, the third uh, uh, y x t x. This this is uh, the, the because it, you, the force applied at this uh, direction. So you have this uh, integration. When you do the all the calculation, you got zero point uh, one one over three. Then this part. This is uh, the the walk down the, the virtual walk down by the external force. And similarly, you can get uh, for the restoring force and also for the damping force. And for the initial force, because it distributes mass, you also need to do the integration from zero to L. And all these things should be balanced, so they, they should be equals to zero. You can um, plot and all these things together, then they can equals to zero. And because this one uh, stands for any time instant, so this one cannot be zero. So you can divide this, so divide this. So finally you can get this equation of motions for this system. So equation of motions for this system. <clears throat> and so this is, uh, we use uh, the idea uh, to, to derive the equation of motion. And as I mentioned, you can use different ways. You can use uh, the, the moment balance. So moment balance to this point, because your external force which makes this uh, are rotated this direction, and, and then the initial force and also the restoring force and damping force make the, uh, the thing rotate this direction. So they should be balanced at this point. So you, you can use that. Also, you can derive the equation of motion uh, like this. You can, <clears throat> if you like, uh, after the, the, the course. <clears throat> So uh, another uh, way is uh, the Lagrange equation. You can, this is uh, the basic uh, equation of the Lagrange equation. You, you may see different form. Sometimes they use 
L equals to uh, T minus T is uh, kinetic energy and B is a uh, potential energy. They use this this uh, expression, uh, and they are the same. They're the same. <coughs> Um, because as a measure, because we will discuss this, we will use this measure at uh, week 16. So we will uh, leave this until then. Uh, for the SKF system, in many cases, use uh, uh, the, 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 the Newton method is uh, very simple. <coughs> so this is uh, our, our main points, main con content of today's lecture, which is the derivative of equation of motion. And there are two special uh, topics we need to discuss. <clears throat> One is that the effect of gravity of equation of motion, uh, how we consider the uh, effect of gravity in the equation of motion. Let's, let's see these this, uh, pictures. This is the original uh, case. So you have a mass. You have a mass here. You have spring dashboard, and the spring is, is at its original uh, state, which means there's no elongation, no compression, zero. There is zero. There are no force here. And this is uh, the, the, the original undeformed state. And then you can release this if you have a support. You know, you have a support. There's a no release, no force in this, uh, in this case. Then we release this, this uh, mass uh, to keep it until it's, it's became a static equilibrium state, which is a, it's a static position. There are no vibration, okay, no vibration here. So you have this, this state we call static equilibrium state. So they have uh, elongation of the spring <coughs> due to the gravity of the mass, due to the gravity. This we, uh, we use a sample delta st. So what is the value of delta st? How we calculate delta st? Where is the equilibrium condition? P L K X K X. I think uh, it should be M J over not K. Not the static one. It should be MJ. W over K equals to MJ. delta st, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. this is a static one. It's like uh, K X equals to F. It's static one. So this delta st should equals to W divided by K, because there's no vibration. Okay, this is what we call static equilibrium state. And starting from this position, from this state here, then we apply a dynamic load to the system. You can see here PT, we apply a dynamic load to, this, uh, to the system, then this, the system starts to vibrate. And we, we take here, which is a static equilibrium state here as a zero for the dynamic di displacement. Okay, the UT is a dynamic displacement because you have a T, it changes with time. But the original position or the reference position is here, which means the static equilibrium position here. <clears throat> so this is a UT. Okay, this is UT. And then if we use the Newton uh, method to derive the equation of uh, motion for this system, it should be here. So we have external force, PT, and this is gravity, uh, W, and this is initial force, FIT. This is restoring force, uh, restoring force due to the spring, and this is a dashboard force, so dashboard force. If we write this down, it should be PT, P, I just use P here, and then P equals uh, uh, W, the minus minus, we just move it to the uh, to the right side of the equation. Then should be this three. So the, this is m, m, and here it should be u t u plus third st. Then two dots. Sorry, just to use this. Then two dots, right? Two dots, and then plus. Uh, this is a, a dashboard force, or the damping force. The damping force is only related to the uh, velocity up here, so it should be C U dots, okay, C U dots. And the restoring force here, restoring force should be K 
minus uh, times delta st, sorry, delta st minus u minus u. Okay, so it should be uh, this. Uh, uh, like if you use this uh, cut free method, you can derive the equation of motion at, at this. And because k delta st here, k delta st equals to w. So the w is cancelled from here, this one is cancelled from here, and this is a constant, so you have a, a differential, so it becomes a, a zero. And then finally, you get the equation of motion like mu dot, I, I will not write this, mu dot plus cu dot plus ku equals to pt. So equals to pt. So which means if you if you use the static equilibrium position as the reference uh, position for the dynamic load or, or the dynamic vibrations, the gravity, the gravity force will be cancelled from the final equation of motion, which means you don't need to consider about the, the gravity force. You don't need to uh, consider about the gravity force if you are using uh, the, uh, the 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 static e equilibrium position as a as a reference position. <clears throat> this is a very useful uh, idea. This is a very useful idea. If you use the, the uh, I mean, if you choose the proper uh, reference. Position you can cancel the you don't need to worry about the static force or the gravity force uh, from uh, in the equation of motion you can cancel that you can cancel that so it will make uh, the problem easier so from this reason we can you we usually form a dynamic analysis from a linear or for a linear system with a static uh, equilibrium position as a reference position so when I give you a problem. I, uh, the problem says, uh, please derive the equation uh, from the uh, static equilibrium position. Or at the beginning of the problem, I said that this structure, this system is at static equilibrium position. Then we apply a dynamic load, which means you don't need to consider about the gravity force or the, the static force, the static force. Mm. But the, the total displacement, mm. Uh, the, the total displacement and the force uh, obtained at, at uh, the corresponding uh, static uh, quantity to the to the dynamic uh, response, which means that uh, if you are consider about the maximum displacement of this mass, you need to consider both the dynamic part and the static part. If 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 I'm asking you what is the maximum displacement of this mass, you need to consider about both the dynamic one. And the static one, and the static one. <clears throat> Let me go back to the to the uh, to the example I, I just show you the, the tall building with wind load, wind load. Okay, we have wind load here, wind load below to this uh, tall buildings. <clears throat> the the wind can be decomposed into two components. One is mean wind, the other tubeless. So tubeless. And the mean one you can treat is as a static force. And the turbulence is a dynamic one. So when you consider about the total display of the tall building due to the wind, it's like, let me, let me simplify this. Let, let me, this is uh, the static equilibrium position due to the mean wind, which means that the wind first push the structure away, push the structure away at this position. This is what we call static equilibrium position. And at this position, the, Due to the, the turbulence, the structure start vibrates like let, let me I like this. Okay, so the total display should be this this one. Okay, it should be the static one plus the dynamic one. So don't forget this. Don't forget this. If you use this this as a reference position, when you calculate, you you get the answer only the dynamic displacement. So the final total display should be this part, the two parts, one part and one part. So if you are familiar with the, uh, the wind design, it's like this. The, in the wind design, the usually actually like this is one plus uh, coefficient with mu. This is static. <clears throat> this is static deformation at the top of the building, and this is a, a amplification factor. 
to consider about the dynamic one. Dynamic, for, for example, is 1.3 is plus, then, which means you, you need to just calculate a static problem, which is much easier, I think, for you. So just a static one, you calculate the delta, then because we already calculated many, many uh, cases, we know the maximum uh, displacement should be uh, 1.3 times of this one, so you just uh, calculate 1.3. So makes the, the, the problem much easier. So this is a very useful idea. We usually use this, uh, uh, this idea to simplify the problem. Let's see another, another case. You have, a, you have a bridge, you have a running train. You have a running train. Let's see, running train. The train will cause two vibrations, uh, two kinds of uh, deflections in this bridge. One is uh, due to its gravity. Okay, due to its gravity. The other is vibration due to the roughness of the surface or the vibration of the bridge. It's quite similar like this. So we can separate this. First, you calculate the, 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 the deflection of the beam due to the gravity of the, uh, the train. Then you can calculate the dynamic responses due to the vibration of this, this, uh, this train. So you can then combine this, you know the maximum de deflection of the beam or of the bridge. Change what slide? Someone say that I need to change the slide. What we'll change what slide? Okay. Uh, so uh, here is the. Uh, <clears throat> so the total uh, response should be uh, uh, combined together, but this is only applicable for linear system. Okay, linear system. Uh, for nonlinear system, because the superposition principle is not uh, tenable, is not uh, applicable, so you cannot use this idea for nonlinear uh, system. For nonlinear system, you need to use the, uh, the reference position from the very beginning. If this is a nonlinear stiffness K, okay, you need to start your, uh, you need to take your uh, reference position here without deformation. You cannot use this as a uh, reference position, because this, if this is a nonlinear K, okay, nonlinear uh, stiffness, uh, this only applicable for linear system, linear K, a linear system. And then uh, the, the static <coughs> force will disappear from the equation of motion if it is measured from the static uh, equilibrium state. And the system is linear, nonlinear system cannot use this one. And then uh, we, 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 in, this, uh, in this class, in this text, we, we only we mainly consider about uh, the linear one, okay, linear system. The nonlinear system is just, uh, <coughs> we will mention it very little in this uh, class. So this is uh, the main contents of today. Uh, I have the final subtopic. I will, I will not discuss this today. Uh, I'll leave it to, to uh, next week. And uh, today you have your homework. I think uh, you have seven problems to derive the equation of motions. Uh, to derive the equation, I will give you uh, the the slide, both, uh, also the slide and the, the homework through the Canvas system. Okay, you can check that after uh, this uh, this uh, class. Okay, so time is up. So okay. let's close the the lecture one. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. See you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Thank you.